If AWS goes down, do you get to take the day off? I'm Allie Diamond, and this is ThreatWire. Once again, we are existing through unprecedented times for what may be the longest AWS outage in history. Let's break down what happened. Early morning on October 20th, 2025, AWS's Keystone Service Region, US East One, experienced high error rates. This caused issues that propagated to AWS services and features that rely on US East One for operation. The increased errors were quickly identified due to being a DNS resolution error with DynamoDB, or AWS's NoSQL database management service. As the services began to recover, the system for launching EC2 instances or their virtual computing platform had errors that cascaded out due to its dependency on DynamoDB. As the EC2 instances were fixed, another service, the Network Load Balancer Health Checks, became impaired which caused connectivity issues with many AWS services. We recovered the Network Load Balancer Health Checks at 9.38 a.m. As a part of the recovery effort, we temporarily throttled some operations such as EC2 instance launches, processing of SQS queues via Lambda event source mappings, and asynchronous Lambda invocations. Over time, we reduced throttling of operations and worked in parallel to resolve network connectivity issues until the service is fully recovered. Repairing the entire system to normal operations took around half a day. However, the outage had catastrophic effects on the internet functionality due to US East One being a critical region for AWS usage. AWS has not released a formal write-up on the outage, so we are waiting to see more details on what exactly happened. Apple is giving out up to $5 million if you find the right exploit chain. On October 10th, 2025, Apple released a blog post outlining their new bug bounty payouts. Their top reward doubled from $1 million to $2 million of payout for specifically zero-click chain attacks. One-click chain attacks quadrupled in maximum payout, going from $250,000 to $1 million. According to Ars Technica, submitting a zero-click attack chain that bypasses the iPhone secure lockdown mode can chain together to lead to a potential $5 million payout. Apple is making a huge push for device security over the past year, especially with the announcement of the iPhone 17 and the memory integrity enforcement, which they see as, quote, the most significant upgrade to memory safety in the history of consumer operating systems. They're so confident on its use to prevent mercenary spyware that they're deploying 1,000 iPhones to at-risk users. To rapidly make this revolutionary industry-leading defense available to members of civil society who may be targeted by mercenary spyware, we will provide 1,000 iPhone 17 devices to civil society organizations who can get them into the hands of at-risk users. This initiative reflects our continued commitment to make our most advanced security protections reach those who need them most. So I'm curious to know, have you ever submitted a bug to Apple and received a payment? What was the process like for you? Let me know in the comments. An estimated 200,000 framework for Linux computers have been shipped with an exposed UEFI command that puts the computers at risk. Framework produces highly customizable and repairable computers. Researchers at Eclipsium were investigating the framework computers and found that recent versions of the computers are at risk to UEFI vulnerabilities. And for context, a UEFI vulnerability is a vulnerability that exists in the low level software that runs before your computer's operating system even starts to run. The vulnerability stems from the inclusion of the MM command and it being exposed in the builds. The MM command does have legitimate uses in helping with diagnostics as it allows for writing and reading directly from system memory. What went wrong is that the functionality of this command is improperly contained. The framework build includes a signed UEFI shell that exposes the MM command. 
When in the signed UEFI shell, attackers can use the unmitigated access to this command. They overwrite the G security pointer to always return success or null. This essentially disables signature verification for following module loads in the boot process and subsequently allows unsigned components to be executed and hidden before the operating system loads. The researchers have alerted the framework team, and they are working on removing the exposed command from the UEFI shells. The updates are rolling out on a regular basis in BIOS version updates for several types of framework computers. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for the week of October 20th, 2025. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. I saw some great comments and the replies of what to do for my two year anniversary, including potentially doing a Q and A, maybe a long stream on the channel or something else. If I did a stream, what would you want to see? If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at ending with Allie. And as per usual, good luck, have fun and don't get caught.